Let us pray together. Be with us this morning, God. Quiet our hearts. May our spirits be still that we might hear from you. Amen. Death, be not proud. For one short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. These are the words of the 16th century English poet John Donne. And to me, they are words of great comfort. They speak of the Christian hope that to die is not to pass from life, but is to pass into life. They speak of the Christian hope that death has been undone by the power of a living God. They speak of the Christian hope that the body of Christ cannot be torn asunder. Yes, they are comforting words especially on this All Saints Day, as we remember those from our community, those whom we loved, who we've lost this past year. And as we remember all of those who have gone on before us. But comforting though they may be, they don't make the grief we feel any less acute, do they? And they don't make that sad longing we feel any less bittersweet do they? This is why on this day, on All Saints Day, we as a church community name that sadness. This is why on this day we acknowledge and we validate and we honor that bittersweet long. That is why on this day, on All Saints Day, we remember the loved ones we've lost. I want us to talk this morning about that word, remember. We use it a lot. We know what it means. It means to access mental images and sensory details of things past. It means to hearken back to people and places and events. And thus, in this context, when we say we will remember our loved ones, we mean we will think of them, visualize them, talk about them honor them. And it's vital we do every one of those things. But let me submit to you what else remember ought to mean when we speak of the loved ones whom we have lost. To remember them should also be to re-member them. Re-member. Remember. Because let's face it, death feels like a dismemberment. When someone we love dies, does it not feel as if we have lost a crucial part of ourselves? As if something that constituted our very essence, as if something that made me, me, and you, you, and us, us, does it not feel upon their passing as if something vital to our being has been severed from us? It does, right? And here's why. Because it has. According to the Christian story, as the body of Christ, we are, each of us, members of the same body. And thus, in death, we lose a member. We are dismembered. But the Christian story tells us that death does not have the final say. It tells us that one short sleep passed and we wake eternally. The full membership of the body of Christ. And that is why the church calendar sets aside this day, All Saints Day. This day for us as the body of Christ to remember those whom we've lost. In today's passage, we see Jesus doing precisely this thing. We see Jesus denying death its power and remembering Lazarus. As you'll recall, in the beginning of this passage, Jesus receives a message from Mary and Martha telling him that Lazarus 
has passed away. And so Jesus goes to them. And when he arrives, he finds his friends, Mary and Martha, weeping. And he sees all of those surrounding Mary and Martha weeping. And at the sight of this, our text tells us Jesus himself begins growing emotional. Where have you laid him? Jesus then asks. And what follows is quite possibly my favorite passage from the whole of Scripture. Mary and Martha say, come and see. And suddenly, Jesus breaks into tears. We can't possibly overstate the significance of this moment. Jesus, God in human form, brought to tears by death. Think on that. Even though Jesus knows that death will not get the final say, even though Jesus knows what he is about to do for Lazarus, still, at the sight of death, Jesus is brought to tears. Which tells us this. We ought never apologize for or never be ashamed about being sad or being emotional or for grieving the loss of someone we've loved. Whether that loved one passed yesterday or 50 years ago, whether that loved one lived 100 years, whether their life was cut short before taking their first breath. Because if God in human form is moved to tears by the reality of death, then why should we feel ashamed for being made emotional by it ourselves? Look how he loved him, is what those around Jesus say about him in that moment. And our tears, like Jesus' tears, speak of love. And they ought never be apologized for. And so the story continues. Jesus goes on to Lazarus' tomb, and after praying, still grieved at heart, he then commands Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus does. It's a remarkable passage. And there's so much that we can take from it. But here's something we would do well to take today. And that is noticing how Jesus remembers Lazarus. After being brought to tears, still grieving at heart, Jesus stares death in the face, denies death its power, and remembers him whom he loved. And in so doing, he provides for us a blueprint for how we ought to treat death ourselves. It was my grandfather, my hero, who first talked to me about time and eternity, about how there is a qualitative difference between the two. I was a boy then, and I'd not yet read as widely on the topic as I have today. It's complex stuff. And the truth is, it baffles me just as much now as it baffled me then. Yet I take it on faith today the way I took it on faith then. That somehow God's realm is different from ours. That somehow eternity is not constituted by linear time. That somehow all our earthly concepts of time are undone by death. That somehow, as John Donne says, one short sleep passed and we wake eternally. The band Mumford & Sons has this wonderful song called Learn Me Right. And the chorus to that song goes like this. I have no strength from which to speak. When you sit me down, you see I am weak. But we will run and scream. We will dance and sing. We will fulfill our dreams and we'll be free. And we will be who we are 
and will heal our scars. And sadness will be far away. Those are beautiful words. And they are beautiful words because they are true. They recall John's vision from Revelation 21. His vision of the new Jerusalem. His vision of heaven heaven coming down to earth. His vision where he says death will be no more. Where he says God will wipe every tear from every eye. Where he says mourning and crying and pain will cease. We cling to a vision like this. And in the face of a vision like this, what power does death really have? What power does death have when we have the power to remember those who we've lost? Remembering. That is the Christian story. Broken lost, estranged humanity being remembered by the God who loves us too much to let us remain that way. The God who loves us so much that he became human and shed tears at the very sight of death. And because God loves us so much and because God has remembered us, we too, therefore, are called to remember those who we love as well. And that is what we do today. On this day, we remember all of those from our community who went on before us this year. Just as we remember all of those who have gone on before us. Look around. We are part of a great cloud of witnesses. A long train that stretches all the way from Mary and Martha and Lazarus to each of these individuals right here for whom we will light candles today. Today we remember them all. For we know that one short sleep passed and we wake eternally. The full membership of the body of Christ. For we know that death does not have ultimate power. We know that death does not get the final say. For we know that death cannot take from us those whom we love. So today we remember that death dare not be proud.